you ever play that game where you ask one another, if you could have any superpower, what superpower would you have? And my usual go-to answer is transportation. Because it'd be so awesome just to go, boom, I'm in Hawaii. Uh, you know, boom, I'm wherever I want to be. That's always been my go-to superpower. But in this past few months of uncertainty, of craziness, of half-truths, quarter-truths, who knows what kind of truths, of people saying one thing about one issue and another thing about the same issue, my superpower I wish I had was to know what the right thing was. The right thing to say, the right thing to do, just to make everything better, okay, peaceful. I just, that's the power that I wish I had. Because I just want to make everything better. But there's only one person who can make things better, and that's Jesus Christ. And so in this time of frustration, of of wondering what is going on, what is there, where is there any hope? What are the answers? I went to the gospels and I opened up to this famous parable and I wanna read it to you and kind of talk through it. And so here's the setup of this parable. It says, on one occasion, there was this expert of the law who stood up to test Jesus. And he says to him, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life. So it's kind of asking, what's, what's the right thing? What's the right answer? What's the right thing to do? What's the right thing to say? Give me the superpower of eternal life. So Jesus responds to him, well, what's written in the law? What do you read in it? How do you read it? And this teacher of the law, he responds to him. He says, love the Lord your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all of your strength and with all of your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. And that's the heart of the law and the prophets, right? Love God, love others. The 10 commandments that we just talked about boils down to how do we love God and how do we love others? So this teacher of the law summarizes the law in the same way. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says to him, you've answered correctly. Now go do this and you will live. Do this and you'll have that superpower. But this man, he wanted to justify himself. And so he, he asked this question. He, he takes it one step further. And he says, well, who's my neighbor? And I loved it when Pastor Phil, the last time that he spoke on our online service, he talked about these echo chambers that we get in. That often we put ourselves around the same type of people that think the same way, that act the same way, and we just hear our same thoughts sort of come back to us again and again by the the TV shows we watch, the, the people we talk to. Again, just this big, huge echo chamber. And I loved it as he was talking about that because I think it's very true that we like similar people who think similar ways. And when we run across people who feel differently about an issue or about a topic or something, then it gets really, really scary. And so it's easy to think of my neighbor as those people who I've sort of placed in that echo chamber with me. Those people who look like me and act like me and think like me. And I think this is what this, this religious ruler, this teacher is, is trying to get to. I'm like, well, if it's my buddies at the Sanhedrin, if it's my you know, buddies down in the, in the temple where we all hang out and we, we talk about uh, the Torah, the scriptures, then yeah, I think I can do that. But let me ask you, who is my neighbor? And then Jesus goes on to tell this story. He says, a man is going down from Jerusalem to Jericho 
And there he fell into the hand of robbers and they stripped him of his clothes. They beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now we know nothing about this man. We don't know who he was. We don't know if he was a Jew. We don't know if he was a Gentile. We don't know if he was uh, what race, what ethnicity. We don't know if he was uh, a bad person. We don't know if he uh, deserved to get beat up. We just know that he was robbed and he's sitting here on the street in need of help. He's half dead and somebody needs to come along and help him. And so we have these people that sure enough walk along this road. And in fact, the first one is a priest. A priest, surely a priest would stop and help this man beaten, lying on the ground, half dead. It says a priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. Not only did he not stop to help, he went out of his way to go to the other side of the road so that he wouldn't have to deal with the issue. He wouldn't have to deal with the man half dead. He wouldn't have to become unclean. He wouldn't have to have his neighbors, his uh, people in his echo chamber, see that he did something perhaps wrong by healing and helping this man who was laying there half dead. No, no, no. Now another man comes along, a Levite. Like this is even a higher level of a person of righteousness, a person who should know how to do good and what good is and what the right decision is and how to help. And it says, when he came to the place, he saw him and he too, not just passed by, but again, went to the other side and passed by. Now this third person comes along and I love the word. This is, but a Samaritan as he traveled and a Samaritan, I'm sure you've heard all about Samaritans, but just kind of a quick recap. Samaritans were just, they were considered the outcasts of outcasts in the Jewish system. And I don't want to take a bunch of time, but like, this is just the, the worst possible person. The person that you would think in your head would be the least likely to do something right, to do something good. But Jesus uses this example and he takes this Samaritan man and this is what he says, that the Samaritan man, he came to where this man, half beaten, lying on the ground, half dead, and said when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, put himself out of his way. He had to walk and put this man on his donkey, took him to an inn and took care of him. And not just took care of him in that moment, but it says the next day he took out two silver coins, gave them to the innkeeper and said, look after him. He said, and and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense that you have. So not only did he take care of him on the road, he brought him to an inn, took care of him the entire today, uh, the the entire day, stayed the night with him. And then when he had to leave, he said, here's money to take care of him for the next days. And when I come back, if there's more money that's needed, I'm going to give that to you too. I'm going to go beyond, above and beyond to take care of this man. So he tells this story and he asks this question back. And he says, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hand of Roberts? And the expert of the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. You know, in Micah 6, 8, it says, he has shown you, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you to love mercy, to act justly, and to walk humbly with your God. 
Jesus in so many ways, the Bible in so many ways tells us exactly how to have this superpower that I desire, that we desire. Love God, love others. Justice, love, mercy, humility. As we see one another, as we talk to one another, could we ask ourselves the question, does this conversation lead me to love? Does this conversation lead me to act justly and to be humble? Does it cause me to have mercy for my fellow brother or sister? Does it lead me to love? And I would hope and pray that every conversation we have, whether on social media, whether uh, live on the phone, I know we don't have many live conversations anymore. I'm talking to you on a camera right now but that every conversation that we would have, every word that we would write would lead us to love, would lead us to reconciliation. That we could for a moment look to a man half beaten on the road, say, I don't know what this man's done. I don't know if this is a bad man. I don't know if he thinks different than me. All I know is that he needs help. And all I know is that I too may one day be on the side of the road and I will need help. And I'll need somebody to come along and save me. Could we act in that way? Could we respond in that way? Could we talk in that way? Could we post in that way? To show love, compassion, humility, mercy, justice and patience for one another. I think if we start taking just a small step in those directions, we will see the healing that we truly need in this world. So I just leave that thought for you as together we look up to Jesus and we be just a little bit more like him in every word, thought, and deed. Have a great day.